number 1 and verse number 18. The Bible said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. I want to look at this tonight for a little, just a little bit tonight, and I want to try with the help of the Lord on preaching a little thought tonight on Mary had a little lamb. But let's pray tonight. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you so much for the privilege you've given us, God, tonight to pray. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, your goodness to us. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you tonight for the good singing. Lord, I'm glad for those of us that are saved tonight. We've got something to sing about. And, uh, Lord, what a joy it is when we got saved. You can put a new song in our mouth. And, uh, Lord, we... we uh, a spring in her step, a smile on her face, shout in her soul, and what a blessing that is tonight. And I just ask you, Lord, as we look in your word, I pray, Father, that there'd be anything in our life tonight that would grieve or quench or hinder the spirit. I pray you'd please forgive us, have mercy upon us. And I pray, Lord, would you use us tonight, help us to be a blessing to somebody. And I pray if there'd be one here tonight and never been born again, if there'd be one be watching by way of live stream, never been saved. I pray you'd take your precious word, and I pray you'd use it to speak to somebody's heart. I'm glad you promised in your word that your word would not return void and we cling to that promise we thank you father for it we love you now praise you lord for all that you do for us in jesus name we pray amen and amen we look here tonight in matthew chapter number one tremendous uh, passage of of scripture dealing with the birth of, of our lord and savior uh, jesus christ and probably every one of us tonight probably as we look back over our childhood we probably can remember maybe a song that we were taught when we were little, Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. How many of you remember that? Boy, I sure do. I remember my mama uh, teaching me that. And then they'd go to Grandma's house. We'd go to school. And uh, we'd sing that songs. And, 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 of course, as we think about it, we understand tonight that there's a whole lot more lines to that particular, uh, uh, you know, that little uh, rhyme or that little song. But, but as we think about it, you know, we understand tonight in, in the Word of God is basically somewhat the same story. As we look here in Matthew chapter number 1, we understand that it was a young girl by the name of Mary that indeed, without a shadow of a doubt, had a little lamb. How do we know that? Because the Lamb of God came to take away the sin of the whole world. And uh, and so, and, you know, and as we, as we think about that this evening, as we look here in Matthew's Gospel, we understand that Joseph was engaged to a young Young Jewish maiden by the name of Mary, and uh, they were betrothed, which actually means that they were legally married, but they were not living together. Uh, during this time, uh, word comes to Joseph, as we've read, that Mary is pregnant, and Joseph uh, knows that he is not the father, but he, but he, but he is sure that somebody is, and so he believes that Mary has been unfaithful to him, and decides to get a divorce. You might say, where do you get that? Well, look at verse number 18 and 19 where it says, the birth of Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they, before they what? 
before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. In other words, uh, he wanted to have a divorce, wanted to put her away privately. Uh, but yet, we, but because he because he loved Mary and, and he and he cared about her deeply, we understand that he wanted to do this thing quietly because the because the penalty for committing Mary's crime was death by stoning. However, uh, before he can put his plan into action, as we've read here in Matthew chapter one, we find that God sends uh, an angel to tell Joseph that things aren't at all like he thinks they are. He tells the Jewish, the Jewish husband that Mary is carrying a child that was miraculously fathered by the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, he is told that this child will be a special child with a special mission. And, uh, and of course we know tonight that there's never been a greater mission in all the world than the message that the Lord Jesus had. And I don't know about you, uh, folk, we are the mission field. And I'm so thankful tonight that this child is to be the Savior. Now we understand as we looked here in Matthew chapter 1 that Joseph's reaction is to take Mary into his home and wait with her until the, until the baby is born. Uh, what they didn't realize that this baby who is growing in Mary's body was none other than the Lamb of God who would one day die for the sins of all men. In fact, if you look there in verse number 5, or 25, it says, And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. Uh, uh, that word protocost there, it actually means uh, he, he, he did not know her. They never had a sexual relationship until uh, Jesus Christ was born. And uh, so tonight, you know, as we think about this, we understand that Mary truly had a little lamb. And uh, so as we think about it tonight, I want, to, I want to give you a couple things to think about this. In verse number 20, we understand that Mary's lamb was a special lamb. Look what it said there in verse number 20. It said, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of who? Is, is of the Holy Ghost. So that tells us tonight that this lamb was different than any other lamb. This lamb tonight, in fact, as we, as we think about Mary's lamb being a, a special lamb, we understand that his conception, talking about the Lord Jesus, was special. In other words, Jesus Christ had no human father. Amen. In fact, his listen, uh, his father was God Himself. And what makes the conception of the Lord uh, Jesus so fantastic is the fact that He was born of a virgin, not not a, not a traditional thing. Uh, we understand as we read here tonight uh, that the conception of Jesus Christ was different. His mother was a virgin. Uh, I'll give you several passages. You can look at this later. Uh, but one of them we read on Sunday, Isaiah chapter number 7 and verse number 14 where it talks about, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. And uh, uh, then in Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 23, uh, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with what? What? With child. Now, in the day and age which we live in, you tell people that. I want to tell you, they think you're absolutely nuts. You've lost your mind. But I want to tell you, we're not here to win friends and influence people. We understand what the Word of God says. And the Bible said that a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, is God with us. So we understand tonight his mother was a virgin. Isaiah 7 14, Matthew 1 23, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 34. And th uh, 35. Now, you might say, why is that important? This is tonight an essential doctrine. Exclamation mark. Why is that? Because without a virgin birth, 
We do not have a sinless Savior, ladies and gentlemen. And if we have no sinless Savior tonight, you and I have no hope of salvation. In fact, 7 billion people on the planet tonight, if Christ was not born of a virgin, I want to tell you, everybody would die lost in their sin. But I'm glad to report to you, I'm glad that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, praise God. It's impossible to be saved and to deny the truth of the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that the Bible is very clear about this. So, you know, as we look at this tonight, we understand that his conception was special. But not only that, we understand that his conduct was special. Uh, from the day that Jesus came into the world until the day he ascended back into heaven there in the book of Acts, he was a person tonight of very special characteristics. And boy, you know, we read the, the, the Gospels tonight. I want to tell you, Jesus was very unique, very unique. Uh, and by, by the way, he, he's wonderful. And, and I want to, listen, we can call him Jesus, but I, I listen, because I'm saved tonight, I'm glad I can call him Lord. And uh, he, he, listen, uh, as we think about our Lord and Savior tonight, listen, his conduct was special. You might say, what do you mean by that, preacher? Well, uh, three things I want to give you in regards to that. First of all, think about the miracles. You ever thought about all the miracles he performed? The Bible is full of the miracles that our Lord and Savior performed. Uh, he could feed the multitudes. One of my favorite is there in John chapter number 6 where he used a little boy. You know, the Bible doesn't really emphasize there was 5,000 men there, but the emphasis is on that little lad that had some fishes and some loaves. And here's the thing, little is much when God is in it. And, and it's amazing how that little boy was willing to give what he had to God. And God breathed upon it, and as a result, there was a tremendous miracle that transpired in that day. I will tell you, if God can do it then, God can still do it tonight, praise God, on this 20, it's day 21st day, this 21st day of December 2021. Folks, listen, there are miracles. He can feed the multitudes. He can open blinded eyes. He can heal the sick. And you know what? Hey, listen, he can even raise the dead. He raised up Lazarus from the dead. He can walk on water. Listen, walking on water. Poise no problem for the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither did stilling a violent storm. Everything that our Lord and Savior did tonight, folk, was special. And when we think about the activities that he, he performed, merely proved that he was indeed who he claimed to be. We see the miracles, but then we see the messages tonight, talking about his conduct. When Jesus opened his mouth, folk, people were marveled at the things that he said. Even when he was only 12, the doctors of the law were astonished at him, according to Luke chapter number 2 and verse 47. When he began his ministry, he continued to amaze the crowds everywhere they, that he went. People were amazed at how, you know, how the Lord Jesus could speak. Uh, John 7, 46, Luke 4, 22. I mean, the messages that Jesus Christ. Can you imagine, my friend, a 12-year-old? I mean, that was Christ. So when we think about his conduct being special with the miracles, the messages, but then the methods. Uh, you might say, what do you mean by the methods? Well, tonight, the way that Jesus Christ carried himself set him apart from all the other people that were around him. He never stooped to the level of his enemies. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, since you've been saved, has somebody ever made you mad? Since you've been born again, my friend, has something ever happened where you could just felt your blood boiling out your eyeballs, maybe coming out your ears? You could see it, you could almost literally see it coming through your fingernails. Where you, where you literally almost felt like you was going to uh, have a stroke where you just had to walk away. Help me, Lord, help me, help me. That ever happened to you? Now, y'all looking kind of religious like that's never happened to you, but I want to tell you it has me. But I want to tell you, listen, one of the things that we see about our Lord, and you think about how they treated our Lord and Savior. Listen, he never, he never reviled back, did he? Uh, listen, they called him names. They treated him like a dog. Multitudes of people wanted to kill him. 
But I want to tell you, he carried himself in a very unique way. Why? Because he's the God-man. All God, all man all at the same time. He never stooped to the level of his enemies. He always kept his Father's will in the center of his focus. And I want to tell you on this, listen, on this Christmas week, folks, uh, we ought to think about that. You and I, as a born-again believer tonight, we ought to do what we can to keep the Father's will in our focus. Where we go, what we eat, what we drink, the people we run around with, we need to make sure that the will of God is in our, uh, the bullseye, the focus, amen. There's nothing any more important that we can do in this life than being God's will. Hey, young people, listen to me now. Yeah, this isn't coming from an office. It's been somebody I've been safe for 41 years. Hey, I want to tell you, the most important thing you can do is make up your mind that you're going to stay in the center of God's will the rest of your life. And I guarantee you, if you'll make up your mind that you'll do that, you'll be glad that you did. Amen. See, there had never been one like the Lord Jesus. So we see tonight as we think about our Lord and Savior tonight, we understand, we see that His conception was special. We see that His conduct was special. But then we understand tonight that His claim was special. Uh, you might say, what do you mean by His claim? Jesus was never shy about telling people who He was. In fact, the claims that He made caused the Jewish people to seek his death. You might be sitting there tonight thinking, what do you mean by that? What was the claim that Jesus made that was offensive to, to these people? Well, basically, it was a twofold answer to that. Number one, look, take your Bible and turn over to John chapter number 10 and verse number 36. One of the first claims that our Savior made, Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. He claimed that He was the Son of God in heaven. And all the people supposed Him to be the Son of Joseph, according to Mark chapter 6, verse number 3. But look what it says here in John chapter number 10 and verse number 36. Well, look back in verse 35, or look back in verse 34. It said, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, then the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified, and sent unto the world, thou blasphemest. Because I said, I, what? I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. And notice verse 39. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. So when we think about this night, uh, about his claim being special, he claimed to be the Son of God. Just as the doctrine tonight of the virgin birth is essential to salvation, so is the doctrine that Jesus is the Son of God. And here's the thing tonight. Until a person comes to a place that they're willing to confess that Jesus, uh, to confess Jesus to be the Son of God, they can't be saved. And, and the Word of God is very clear about that. So, see, He claimed to be the Son of God, but then not only that, but Jesus claimed to be God. Look, 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 back, look over in... Uh, John 14. John chapter number 14. He claimed to be God. And basically, this claim was even more offensive to the Jews than the other one was. Why is that? Because by making this claim, Jesus was telling them that he was eternal that He was their God. Look what it said here in John chapter number 14 and verse number 9. Jesus said unto him, talking about Philip, He said, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen who? Seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? 
Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for thy very work's sake. Uh, look in uh, uh, the Gospel of John chapter number 8. John chapter number 8 in verse number 58. We, we, we see the claim. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. One more I want you to look at. Look at John chapter number 10, verse number 30. John chapter number 10 and verse number 30. You think about this one now. Well, look at verse 20. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You know, a lot of times people, let, let, me, let me just hit something right here. Look, look back at verse number 28. Let's look back at verse 27. It said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they what? And they follow me. Talking about the shepherd. I've seen a beautiful illustration of that over in Romania. You'd see the shepherds out there tending their sheep. And they, they'd have this little camper thing where they'd lay down at. And you'd see the shepherd. And, and I'd, I'd ask the missionary about the, uh, who is that out there? They, they said, he said, that's the shepherd. He said, watch for a moment. And those sheep would just follow that shepherd. And, 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 he'd, and, and he said, if you got real close, he'd call those sheep. Like he, maybe you've got a dog at home. Come here, Sheba, or come here, Billy, or come here, Joey, or whatever the name of your dog might be. I would tell you, uh, the shepherd would know the names of those sheep. And he would call out to the sheep, and those sheep would follow the shepherd. Well, same thing with the Lord, but look, look here tonight. It says there uh, in John chapter number 10, verse number uh, uh, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they, they follow me. And I give unto them what kind of life? I want to ask you a dumb question. What does that word eternal mean? Eternal forever, isn't it? It doesn't say I give you life until you uh, think a bad thought, does it? It doesn't say I, I give you life until you uh, do something that you ought not do. Why? Because here's the thing. Listen, every one of us tonight are going to do things that we ought not do. Now let me clarify that tonight. When we get saved, the Bible said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let's take Taisha. Did I say that right? Taisha. She got saved on Sunday. So she's an she's a infant now. She, she, she's, a, she's a baby in Christ. And as she begins her journey, uh, you know, I mean, you think about your little children. You know, she, well, uh, of course, a, a baby can't walk yet. But, you know, as, as she grows, then she'll get to the point where she'll start walking. She'll fall down, you know, kind of like a baby trying to take that first step. And... Uh, a baby will stumble, and then they'll get to the point where they can run. And you know, you follow what I'm saying. And, and, it, and it's the same way with a with a with a, 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 a new Christian. Christian, uh, they have it as they, you know, God puts within their heart. But God put within her heart a desire to serve the Lord. Does that mean she's perfect? No. But it means that her life has been changed. Why? By the transforming work of the power of the Holy Ghost of God. And, and here's the thing. Uh, there's that little old song we sang before. The, the things I used to do, I don't want to do them no more. The place I used to go, I don't want to go there no more. The, the people I, I, I used to run around with, I, I don't want to do them no more. Why? Because there's been a great change in my life. And only God can do that. And the same thing with you tonight here. But he said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall what, folk? Never perish. I'm glad we don't serve an Indian given God. He said, they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I, I, I've dealt with people down through the years, and, and, and they'd say, well, preacher, you can lose your salvation. You can do this, that. I, and I'd bring this verse up where, you, you know, you can't be plucked out of the Father's hand. You know what they'd say? You, well, you can't be plucked out of his head, but you can jump out. That was their response. You can jump out. Where does it say you can jump out? It doesn't say that. That's not what the, the Bible says here. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. 
But here's what I want you to see. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And notice what made the Jewish people have a meltdown. Look in verse number 30. This is what he said. I and my Father are what? Are one. His claim was special. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, but Jesus claimed to be God. And by the way, I want to say he is God. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. We see that Mary's lamb was a special lamb. We understand tonight that as we think about that, that his conception was special. We understand that his conduct was special, that his claim was special. But then we understand tonight that Mary's lamb was a sacrificial lamb. Look, if you would, tonight in Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 21. It said, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. We can stop right there. Why? For he shall what, folk? He shall save his people from their what? From their sins. Mary's little lamb came into this world for one purpose. It was not to walk on water. It was not to heal all the sick, the, the, the sick folk. If, but he could, couldn't he? Listen, there's nothing God can't do. There, there are people that are sick with cancer, heart attacks, all kinds. Can, can, can the Lord heal them? Absolutely He can. But we understand tonight the main purpose He came was not to heal sick folk. It wasn't to open blinded eyes. It was not to calm the storm. It was not, listen, G, listen folk, Jesus came for the sole purpose tonight. Number one person, uh, the number one purpose, the reason why He came was to die for you and I. He was a special lamb. He was a sacrificial lamb. And the Bible says this in Luke chapter number 19, 10. It said, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. You know what the Lord, you know what Jesus is doing right now? He's seeking. He's looking for the, he, listen, he knows the, he, listen, he knows about everybody, but he's seeking those, my friend, that are lost. For the Son of Man came to seek, but I'm glad, thank God, honey, that it didn't stop right there. He came to seek and to what? And to save. Thank God, listen, there's nobody in this world he can't save. <laughs> Amen, praise God. The greatest gift, my friend, during this holiday, say, you know somebody in your family that's lost? You know, a next door neighbor or somebody that you work with or a friend that you care deeply about, I want to tell you, the greatest gift, my friend, that they could ever receive is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. More, my friend, than a new shirt, more than a new bottle of aftershave, more, my friend, uh, than a pair of shoes, more, my friend, than a gift card, the greatest gift that anyone could ever receive is the gift of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. The only way that we could ever be saved is through Jesus. Why is that? Because he was a spotless lamb. Amen. You think about this now. Before any lamb could be offered as a sacrifice, we don't have time to turn back there, but it had to be examined thoroughly and declared spotless according to Numbers 28 9. And an animal that was impure or deformed could not be offered. For Jesus to be the sacrifice for our sins demanded that he was a perfect specimen. He had to be a human without spot or without blemish. And by the way, folk, you and I don't fit that bill, but I know somebody that does. His name is Jesus tonight. He's spotless. Without spot, without blemish, Jesus fits the bill. He's the Son of God. 
He's the sinless Son of God according to 2 Corinthians 5, 21, 1 Peter 1, 22. And I want to tell you, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and me, He, he was shedding innocent blood. He was dying in the place of all the guilty sinners who had ever, who, who had ever lived and who ever would live. He is the pure Lamb that was dying for a wretched world. I want to tell you, when Jesus, my friend, died on Calvary, who should have been on that cross? I want to tell you, every one of us, listen, they portrayed that in a play on Sunday night. I want to tell you, who should have been on that cross? Every one of us should have been there. We should have took the nails in our hands and our feet. We should have been the one, my friend, uh, carrying the, the crown of thorns on our head. Our blood should have been shed. But I'll tell you one thing tonight, Mike. Why? Because we deserve to die. But I'm glad that Jesus, he looked beyond our faults. And he saw our need. Amen. Amen. I, I, I listen, I don't know about you. Man, that is such a blessing to know that. See, he was a spotless lamb. He was a, he, he was a submissive lamb. In other words, Jesus was not forced into the role of as a sacrifice. He willingly, folk, willingly submitted to all that he endured. He did, listen, folk, he did it out of a heart of love for you and me. Listen, listen to me. Hey, hey young people. I know how the drill works. I, some of you girls out here tonight, you know, what you, you know what the deal is? You're looking for Romeo. And some of you Romeos here tonight, you know what you're looking for? You're looking for Juliet. Oh, if I could just see that beautiful one. Vice versa. You, you, hello, anybody home out there? But can I, I want to tell you this. Nobody will ever love you like Jesus Christ. Thank God for a mother's love. Thank God for a father's love. Thank God for, uh, my, you know, I go, I, 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 I thank God for my mama, my dad. Thank God for my family. But I want to tell you, nobody, listen, nobody will ever love you like Jesus Christ will. Aren't you glad for that tonight, folk? And, and the Word of God is, is full of the evidence. You read it all the way through the Scripture, and we find the love of God. You might say, yeah, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter. Jesus paid the price so we could go free. John 8, 32 said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, what? Free. See, he was a submissive land. He, he willingly submitted to all that he endured. He did it out of a heart of love. Jesus was God in the flesh. He could have spoken the word, and his executioners and his accusers would have vanished away into nothing. He could have expressed the thought, and, in, and everything would have been no more, but he did not. You ever heard that song? He could have called 10,000 angels. But he died alone for you and me. He could have did it. But my friend, he voluntarily, vicariously, substitutionarily laid down his life for us. So we can understand what life really is. Mary's lamb was sacrificial. He, he was a spotless lamb. He was a submissive lamb. He was a sacrificed lamb. All the rest meant nothing unless this part was fulfilled. It wasn't enough to Jesus to be sinless and surrendered, but he had to suffer and die before sin could ever be done away with. How do we know that? Hebrews 9.22 says this, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You know what that word remission means? There's no forgiveness. You ever... Maybe even before you got saved, maybe, maybe you did something that was wrong and you just felt so guilty about it. Maybe, maybe your mom or your dad told you to do something, you didn't do it. You lied. Or maybe you was in school and you looked over at somebody on the honor roll, you looked over at their math qu uh, test and you cheated. And it ate you up all day. I, you know, I, I, listen, I don't know what the deal might be. Here's the thing. I remember that night I got saved 41 years ago. I walked in that church carrying the sins that I'd carried for so long. For 20 years. 
There's no reprobate, a messed up teenager. I thought life was just one big party, but that night I got saved. You know, the, the neatest thing was when I got up off my knees, I felt like I could fly. I, I wasn't saved by my feelings, but I'll tell you one thing, it sure, did, it sure did feel good. When I walked out the door, I mean, for the first time in my life I was free. Why? You know why? Because of one word, forgiveness. Isn't it wonderful tonight to know on this 21st day of December 2021 if you're saved that you have been forgiven? And my friend, as we think about that, Mary had a little lamb. This lamb was a sacrificial lamb. It was spotless. It was submissive. It was a sacrifice lamb. But then I want to say Mary's lamb is a saving lamb. Here's the thing. I'm about done. If this story ended here with Jesus dead on the cross... It'd be a sad story, wouldn't it? There would be no reason to celebrate Christmas and no need to even come to church. We'd be wasting our time. There'd be no salvation, no hope for souls. If he died and that was the end of him, that would be the end of us as well. But I'm glad the story doesn't end there, folk. Amen. Three days after Jesus died on the cross, according to Matthew 28, verses 1 through 6 and many others, he arose from the grave. Hebrews 7.25 Mary's lamb is a saving lamb. Hey, listen, here's the thing. He has the power to save sinners. Those who are lost in sin, I want to tell you, I'm glad you've got hope today. That's right. Three things about that. Number one, he can cleanse sin. He, listen, His blood has the power to wash away sin forever. Uh, we, 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 we sing that song, what can wash away my sin? What's the response? What can make me whole again? Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. See, uh, he, listen, He has the power to save sinners. He can cleanse sin. When we place our faith in the Lord Jesus and accept His death and resurrection as the payment for our sin death, He washes us in His blood. And our sin are no longer the issue. See, He can cleanse sin. But then I want to say number two, He can convert souls. The human, hey, by the way, Jeremiah 17, 9, the human soul is a wicked thing. The heart is wicked and desperately wicked, of course the Bible says, and it's lost and undone and cannot have fellowship with God. You go all the way back to the book of Genesis and you'll find the first sacrifice. But I want to say tonight, He can cleanse sin, He can convert souls, but here's the, here's the third thing. He can change sinners. You ever, you ever got tired of the way you're living? You ever got tired of the way you're thinking? You don't, you don't have to walk this. Listen, you, you don't have to go down the same road. You, you, you can, he, listen, he's the one that, you might, I, I've had people say this, I can't change. Listen, I, you may not be able to change, but he can change you. When something is wonderful and big and miraculous as the Lord moves in and sin moves out, something is going to change. I can't explain it, folk. All, all I can tell you tonight is this. It's an absolute miracle. I told you Sunday I saw a boy this past week. I hadn't seen him in 41 years. And man, to talk to him, I mean, he, uh, he, uh, he had been saved by the grace of God. And he was telling me when I saw him, he wants to come up here and visit our church. I mean, that is that. Listen, listen. I want to. That was beyond the realm of possibility but 41 years ago. But Jesus Christ can make a difference. And, and listen, as we listen, as we get ready to close tonight, I want to say this: There's nobody that Jesus can't work a miracle for. I'm glad Mary had a little lamb. 
The Bible said here in Matthew 1 21, said, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their what? From their sin. Father, as we look to you tonight, we thank you for Jesus. I pray, God, that you'd please take the word of God tonight. And may you speak to hearts. I pray that somebody might be able to walk away tonight saying it's been good to be in the house of God. And if by chance there's somebody watching by way of live stream or somebody here tonight that's not even sure they're saved, may you take your word and may you speak to their heart. May you let them know how much you love them and how much you care about them. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you so much for making us free through the blood of your Son. In Jesus' name, amen.